Praise the Lord, Apostolic Faith Church. Before I start today, I want to give thanks to Pastor and Sister Doremus for allowing me this opportunity to stand before you today and speak. I would like to start this message today by first explaining how I came up with the idea for today's lesson. A few months ago, I was sitting at home listening to an apostolic minister preach, and the name of that message he was preaching was titled, Is It Possible to Find God? Two of the scriptures he used for his sermon was Proverbs 8.17 that reads, I love them that love me, and those who seek me early shall find me. And Jeremiah 29.13, And ye shall seek me and find me when you search for me with all your heart. The conclusion of his message showed that it was indeed possible to find God. And that all it took was the mention of his name. Because God is not some make-believe person that we pray to, or as some people claimed, a God of the past. But that in fact, he is the God of yesterday, today, and forever. And that it is his desire that all should find him. So, some time had passed and I found myself sitting on my recliner. And this thought came to my mind which would then become the title of this message. And that is, if it is possible to find God, then is it possible to miss God? And that is what I would like to speak on today for just a few minutes. Is it possible to miss God? But before we can start this lesson, let me give you a couple of examples on what it means to miss God. If you decide to walk your own path in life, you can miss the will of God. If you decide that you are sick and never go up to the altar for prayer, you can miss a healing from God. Or if you never participate in church service or respond to an altar call, you can miss a move of God. So there are many possible ways that we are capable of missing God. But today I just want to focus on three of them. The first way it is possible to miss God is by not making church a priority. You see, there was a time in America when the church was the focal point of the community. And families back then made it a priority to be in church. Unfortunately for today, that is no longer the case. Filth and perversion has filled our airwaves and televisions, while subjects that are contrary to the Bible are taught in public schools. We have even come to a time which statistics show that a majority of people who claim to be Christians feel it is only necessary to go to church around once a month. They believe that going to the house of God weekly just isn't necessary. But that's why he tells us in Hebrews 10.25, not to forsake the assembling of ourselves together, as is the manner of some, but exhorting one another, and so much more as you see the day approaching. We need to understand that going to church is essential, because that is where God's people hear God's word. And yes, reading and studying your Bible at home is a good thing, but sitting under a pastor who has been called by God is necessary to any person's spiritual growth. Also, going to church ensures us that we never have to walk this journey alone, for we now belong to a church family. And a, a church family comforts one another, a church family loves one another, we sing together, we worship together, we pray together, and when God answers our prayers, we rejoice together. But even knowing all of this, there will still be some who will choose not to make church a priority in their lives. Some will claim that they don't go to church because it's full of hypocrites. Well, where else would you want them to go? At least in church, there's a chance that God can change them. I have even had friends that tell me they plan on going to a church, 
but they just haven't found the perfect one yet. Well, newsflash, there is no perfect church this side of heaven. And even by chance, if you thought you found one, the moment you walked in, it would be an imperfect. Because the Bible says that all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. So let's stop making excuses and start making church a priority. Let's stop missing God and start finding him. So if one way to miss God is not making church a priority, what is the second way you can miss God? Well, how about not making a habit of reading your Bible? Do you realize that if you were to walk into many homes today, chances are you would find a Bible somewhere in that house? It could be a family heirloom. It could be a children's Bible that you had when you were young. Or it could even be a Bible that you purchased somewhere. As a matter of fact, a recent survey from 2021 showed that 85% of homes have a Bible in it. But sadly, out of those 85% of homes, only 11% admit to reading it once a day. Do you realize, though, that every situation that you're going through, your Bible has the answer to that problem? When you feel sick, our Bible says he's our healer. When you're tired, our Bible says he's our rest. When you're in the middle of a storm, our Bible tells us that he's our anchor. When you feel weak, our Bible says he is our strength. And when you feel alone, our Bible says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open up the door, I will come into him and will sup with him and he with me. Reading the Bible every day is not only important, but necessary in a Christian's relationship with God. It could be the key to finding God or missing God. And I don't want to miss him. So the third reason now that you could miss God, start thinking that prayer isn't necessary. And that prayer is just a burden instead of an asset and a joy. And fail to realize that it's something that can relieve every burden and fear. It is important that every person should have a time and a place each day for prayer. It doesn't matter what time you choose. God's schedule is always open. And he's ready and waiting to hear from you. But for a lot of us, we fail to keep that appointment with him. We tell ourselves, I'm just too busy, or I can't pray tonight, it's family night. There is no greater thing you could do as a parent than pray with your children. Failing to show them the importance of prayer as they mature could cause them to miss God also. Then there are those who may ask, what can prayer really do? Well, I'll tell you, prayer can open prison doors. Prayer can save entire cities. Prayer can bring rain in the time of drought. Prayer can keep one cool in the fiery furnace. Prayer can close the mouth of lions. Prayer can open up the deaf ears and cause the lame to walk. People need to hear what the power of prayer can do. I am here today because of the power of prayer. As a very young child, I was diagnosed with leukemia. The doctors told my parents there was nothing more they could do. But Jesus said, I've come to heal all disease. And that night, as my mom held me, my dad made his way to the church and up to the altar. There he began to pray. He asked God for two things, to heal his son of leukemia and an assurance of that healing. He told God, I am not leaving this altar until I know my son has been healed. And he prayed that assurance, and as he prayed, that assurance of a healing came. And at that moment, he knew everything was going to be okay. And because there is power in prayer, I am here today alive. When the doctor says it's impossible, there's no way. 
Church, with the power of prayer, God can turn the possible into possible. There's no benefit in our life to missing God and what he wants to do for us. That's why we must never underestimate the priority of going to church. We must never underestimate the importance of reading God's word daily. And we must never underestimate what having a daily prayer life can accomplish through God. Thank you very much.